In this video, I'll explain three types of reasoning that humans use to understand the world. The first type is abductive reasoning. This is the process of eliminating unlikely explanations for an observation and determining the most reasonable explanation. To do abductive reasoning, you first have to assume that some conditional statement, P implies Q, is true. So that's going to be given. We also have to observe that some effect Q has happened. So that is given as well. When we guess that P is the cause for Q, then we're using abductive reasoning. So P is inferred. Here's an example. We all know that one reason for lights being off could be because there's a light switch that's in the off position. The switch breaks the circuit and causes no electricity to flow. So we'll assume that that's given. Assume P implies Q is true. P leads to Q. If the light switch is in the off position, then the lights will be off. Let's also say that you walk into a room and observe that the lights are off. That's going to be the effect, Q. And that's given as well. What we'll do next is we'll try to guess the reason or cause for the lights being off. We can make an abductive inference that the reason the lights are off is because the light switch is in the off position. This is an example of abductive reasoning. But is it possible that there are actually other reasons for the lights being off? What could these be? Take a moment and brainstorm for yourself some possible causes for Q besides the light switch. It could be that the bulbs are burned out. Maybe an animal chewed through the wiring. There could be a tripped circuit breaker, a fuse could have blown, power lines might have been damaged in a storm, or you might have an unpaid electric bill. And there could be many other possibilities too that we didn't think of. What we want to do next is use what's called a fishbone diagram to try and analyze the possible causes for an effect. The diagram can start with what looks like a conditional arrow. But there will be several branches. So we could have many causes for an effect. On the right side, the arrow points to the effect Q that was observed. And in this case, it's that the lights are off. On the left side, we want to come up with possible causes. So I'll start with just P, which was the light switch is in the off position. So P is one thing that could lead to Q. But now let's put other letters around the fishbone diagram. We could have R, S, and T. R could stand for burned out bulbs. S could stand for unpaid electric bill. And T could be a tripped circuit breaker, which is a device that cuts off electric current when there's a problem. And there could be many other possibilities that we didn't think of. So what I'll do is I'll put those over here on the left, showing that the fishbone could keep going if we needed it to. 
And on that side, I'll put other explanation. The point is, we don't really know what the true cause for the lights being off is. There could be many possibilities. We might think that P is the most likely of these possibilities, and that's part of abductive reasoning. Brainstorming about the possibilities, and then selecting what you think is the most likely cause. Abductive reasoning is part of forming a hypothesis in science. Here's an example from the past. Ancient people observed an effect Q that the Earth appears motionless to an observer who's on it, and the sun, moon, and stars appear to move across the sky throughout the day and night. It's something we still observe today. And ancient people wanted to figure out why. Why was this happening? What's the cause for the observed effect? They also assumed that if Earth were a stationary center of the universe, then Earth would appear motionless to anyone who's on it. And it is possible that the sun, moon, and stars could move across the sky throughout the day and night revolving around Earth. And you can't blame people of the past for assuming the inference that Earth is a stationary center of the universe and all celestial bodies revolve around us. It's a completely logical possibility. But we know now that it's actually not the case. And where ancient people got it wrong in many cases was that they said that P was definitely the cause for Q. They didn't understand that in abductive reasoning, it's always an assumption. It's always a guess. Is it possible there are other explanations for the observations? What could these be? Well, we know now that Earth spins on its axis giving us the impression that stars revolve around Earth. We're also moving along with Earth, so it's not moving relative to us. And this gives us the impression that Earth is stationary, but it's actually moving over 60,000 miles an hour around the Sun. A fundamental principle of abductive reasoning is that it never proves anything. There's always the possibility that our proposed explanation was not the correct one. The next type of reasoning is inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is the process of determining a general conclusion based on observations of several specific examples. Inductive reasoning is used when we observe a pattern and from that pattern predict a conclusion. First we observe P. And so it's given. And we observe Q. And that's given as well. We observe P and observe Q. And repeat this process many times. After observing repeated cases of P and Q occurring together, we may make the generalization that P will always lead to Q in all cases. So the conditional statement P implies Q is inferred through inductive reasoning. Here's an example. For unknown reasons, a certain village's people believe in the existence of a Sasquatch that inhabits the woods around their village. Every night, villagers go out in groups for confirmation to look for the Sasquatch. But in hundreds of years of searching, no group has ever seen the Sasquatch. Does Sasquatch exist or not? Well, the mathematical answer is we cannot know for sure. Maybe every time the villagers went out looking for him, he hid behind a tree or under a rock. 
If you can't look everywhere at all times, then you can never be 100% certain that he wasn't there. But in the Sasquatch example, what would be a reasonable conclusion to form from the evidence using inductive reasoning? Here's mine. If the villagers continue to look for Sasquatch, they won't find one. It should be written as an if-then statement, where the evidence from the past is extrapolated to draw a conclusion about what will happen in the future, even though we don't know that it's certain. A fundamental principle of inductive reasoning is that even if a pattern repeats itself a large number of times in every observed case, it does not prove that the conclusion is true. But a counterexample would be a single case that disproves a generalization. In many real-life scenarios, it's actually impractical or impossible to check every possible case for the existence of a counterexample. So in the case of the Sasquatch, they had looked for hundreds of years, and they didn't find one. It would be impractical or impossible to check everywhere all the time. And you also don't know what's going to happen in the future, too. All we can do is use the evidence we have to make our best conclusion. Since we can't check every case, we have to concede the possibility that a counterexample could potentially exist, even if one hadn't been observed ever. What would be the counterexample that would prove our generalization false? Observing a Sasquatch Inductive reasoning is an important part of forming a hypothesis in science. Here's an example from science. Let's say it's given that a human is going to release a rock from rest above ground. And then you also observe the rock fall. We've all observed this experiment being carried out countless times and it always went a certain way. Every time P occurred, Q followed. If the rock was released, it fell. Now, After observing the phenomenon several times, we could then form the general conclusion. P leads to Q. Every time a human releases a rock from rest above ground, the rock falls. This is inductive reasoning forming a general conclusion from specific examples. The hypothesis is, if a rock is released from rest above Earth's surface, then the rock will fall. It's written as an if-then statement, and it's something that can actually be tested. After the rule is held up countless times, and no counterexample has ever been observed, we may assume with very high confidence that the rule will always continue to hold, even though we can never be 100% certain that it will. This brings us to our third type of reasoning called deductive reasoning. Here, general statements will lead us to specific conclusions. Deductive reasoning is the only type that can be used to prove that statements are true. But notice here that prove has an asterisk by it. Why is that? Well, in order to use deductive reasoning, we first have to write down given statements that we assume are true. This doesn't mean they actually are true, but for the purposes of doing deductive reasoning, we assume they are. Then we can create new statements that logically follow from the givens. And the logical conclusions we draw are true if the given statements were true. Here's an example. If an object is naturally formed and hard and composed of minerals, then the object is a rock. Let's assume that that is the given definition of a rock. Let's assume that it's true. 
Let's say it's also given that the object pictured here is a naturally formed object that's hard and composed of minerals. That's P. Now since we said before that whenever P occurs, Q will follow, then we can deduce here that Q must follow. The object must be a rock. That's deductive reasoning. Here's another example. Let's say that all cats in which Hazel's house are black. This is actually an if-then statement. If a cat is in which Hazel's house, then it is black, would be another way to say it. Let's say that this particular cat is located in which Hazel's house. Can we form a conclusion using deductive reasoning? We can. The conclusion should be that the cat must be black. All cats in the house are black. The cat's in the house. We can conclude it must be black. There's no other way it could be. Deductive reasoning is what all of mathematics is based upon. You start with some given equation, do some algebra on it, and arrive at a specific conclusion which is 100% guaranteed to be right. In order for 2x plus 1 equals 7 to be true, x has to be 3. There's no other way it could be. And that's one way to tell that you've actually used deductive reasoning. It's when our conclusions are 100% certain and there's no other way it could be. Once it's been shown in many instances that the conditional relationship P leads to Q holds, then we could assume with very high confidence that it's true. We can deduce that whenever P occurs, Q will necessarily follow. But we have to remember, our conclusions are only true if the givens were true. Here's that rock example one more time. We may assume that if a rock is dropped, then it'll fall based on our experience from the past. Also assume that I'm about to release a rock. Can you deduce what will happen? You could deduce that the rock will fall. But keep in mind that the conclusion is only true if the premises were.